But go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. So saved Christians, you got to understand that one day we're going to go before the judgment seat of Christ. So while we're here on earth, one day we're going to be raptured up to heaven. We believe in a rapture, amen. Amen. And we believe it's before the tribulation, amen. amen. Because if, you're, if you don't believe that you're going to, if you believe you're going to go through the tribulation, then you're not going to go through the judgment seat of Christ, which we fully deny. You have to go to the judgment seat of Christ. Why do you have to go? Look at verse 10. For we must all. Isn't that what it said? Yeah. yeah. So that's why all of us saved Christians have to go to this judgment seat of Christ. So when we go to this judgment seat of Christ, the verse says, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. So every good or bad thing that you've done will be judged. Every good or bad. Every good or bad thing that you've done has to be openly exposed and judged to the, to the very thought, the very thought life that you have. Yeah, how about that? All right. <laughs> How many of you have thought ill? How many of you thought some negative thing about the person sitting next to you? <laughs> and then how would you like that played and openly exposed at the judgment seat of Christ? And the person sitting next to you is like, brother, sister, what? You thought of me that way? Well, how could you think that way? <laughs> I thought that you told me that I was the greatest thing in life, you know? So the thing is, that's the reason why the judgment seat of Christ is going to expose everything. And you're all going to be in terror. You're all going to be in terror. So Danielle and Natalie, I'm sure there's a lot of bad things they thought about each other, that they're going to be shown at the judgment seat of Christ, you know. And maybe Danielle is going to say to Natalie, yeah, I know you thought of me that way. That's no surprise to me. And then when it's my turn at the judgment seat of Christ, Danielle would probably say, yeah, I know, Pastor, you thought of me that way, that I stink, <laughs> that I stink at ping pong and that I'm a loser. I already know you thought of me that way, Pastor. So. <laughs> okay, now, <laughs> now we have, uh, just to let online people know, there are several Danielles in this room, so we ju you just don't know which Danielle we're talking about right here. <laughs> All right, now, anyway, the point is, is that it's good or bad that we're judged for, Okay. Now I'm not happy about this. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, the thing is, is that this has always been the question, but I think I discovered the answer. It says right here in verse 11, knowing therefore the what? Terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Now, the question is, what is the terror? So let's put red ink here. That way it can look terrible enough, okay? So... The question that Bible believers have always wondered was, what is the terror? Some have claimed that they figured it out, and then some claim that they don't know. Okay, so there is terror at the judgment seat of Christ. Before you think you can get away with your sin, you got to realize this. You can't get away with your sin because you're going to face some kind of terror, which we don't know what it is. Now, I do know this, is that go to Psalms chapter 88. Let's just first understand that the word terror is not a good word. Let's all establish that fact. Some people think the judgment seat of Christ is not that much terrible as the word of God might say it to be. Just because the Bible says terror, it may not be as terrible as I think. No, it is worse than you think. Yeah, I'm going to show you that it's going to be worse than you think. Yeah, you All right, let's go to Psalms chapter 88. See, y'all th <laughs> think, think that as long as I you know, preach against homosexuals, that leaves you out of the loop. No, look. <laughs> No, come on, man. You know, everyone has sin. No one is perfect. No one go comes out unscathed at God's judgment. See? Sometimes we all go, amen. We all get happy when someone else's sin is preached against except your sin. And then when your sin is pointed out, you all walk off huffing and puffing out of the room, folding up your hands and say, I don't like what the preacher said. And you put up a stiff upper lip after that. Okay, look at Psalms chapter 88. Okay, now look at this, okay? Verse 16, thy fierce wrath goeth over me, thy terrors have cut me off. But whose wrath? Whose terror? Look at verse 14, Lord, why castest thou off my soul? Why hidest thou thy face from me? Okay, so 
Let's establish the fact right here, one by one, so that I can build up the terror correctly within you, is that Psalms chapter 88, now what verse did I read? 14 and 16, is that right? Okay, 14 and 16, this is referring to God's wrath and God's terror. Now notice he says wrath and terror, right? So it's like they're simultaneous to each other. They're in the same boat of horror level, so to speak. Now go to John chapter 3, okay? Let's build this up a little more. Let's go to John 3. Let's first establish the fact how, how bad wrath really is, okay? Wrath, you got to understand, is hellfire. So that's burning in hell forever. That's how bad wrath is. Go to John chapter 3 and verse 36. <clears throat> Notice what the Word of God says right here. Jesus said concerning about salvation, He that uh, believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life. Okay, so if you don't believe on Jesus Christ, you don't have life in heaven, right? But where do you go? But the wrath of God abideth on him. You go to hell, see? So think about this. God calls wrath hell fire. Now the thing is this, is that Christians don't burn in hell forever. We know that for a fact. But he's putting this at the same line right here. So whatever this thing is, it's going to be very terrible. Now there's a heretical doctrine. Go to 1 Corinthians 3. 1 Corinthians 3. There is a heretical doctrine that teaches that Christians temporarily burn in hell or some kind of purgatory. There is a heresy that's spreading about that teaching. That is totally not true. That is totally not true. You might say, I never heard that teaching before, Pastor. That's right. It's very rare. Only very weird oddballs teach that. I don't know of mainstream Christian groups that teach something like that. This is a very strange, weird group that teaches that. But to establish the fact that you're not burning, okay? So the point is you're not going to burn in some kind of hell. So let's clear away that fact. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 15. If any man's work shall be burned, okay? If your work is burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be what? Saved, yet so as by fire. Okay, now the point is, is that Christians are not going to faith God's wrath based on 1 Corinthians Chapter 3 and verse 15. So you're in the safe. So because you're in the safe, this does not apply to you. Okay, so if you're not, not only that, you're not going to get any kind of burning. See that? Is that what the verse said? You're not going to get a flame touch you. So there's no such thing as temporary burning or something like that. Okay, that leaves me out of the loop, Pastor. No, it may be worse than you think. You're scaring me, Pastor. Good then you're going to start living for God more often and be more careful of your sin. Ready for this? Okay, this is what I think. Okay, so let's first establish the context. Okay, go to 2 Corinthians 5. Now, most of the Christians I talk to believe this. Most of the Christians I talk to believe that the terror is referring to when God judges you for your sin. So because of that utmost shame for your sin, that's why you receive terror. I'm starting to believe in that now, what the majority of those Christians are saying but I'm going to explain why a little more, okay? Look at verse 11, <coughs> which we read before. Knowing, what's the next word? Therefore, the terror of the Lord. Therefore means it's explaining you why there's terror. So why is there terror? Because of the context of verse 10, see? 10, uh, everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Everything that you've done in your life, that's why you receive terror. But why should that be more scary than this, Pastor? I'm going to show you. Go to Philippians. Philippians. Out of all the teachings, okay, that you've heard, this might be the number one teaching that you might be grateful for that you've heard so that you be more careful. Ready for this, folks? Okay, let's look at the book of Philippians. And then we're going to look at chapter 3 and verse 21. Chapter 3 and verse 21, okay? And then uh, when, you, when you have your hand over there, uh, I'd like for you to jump to Matthew chapter 24, okay? Matthew chapter 24. Actually, because I kept turning to Matthew 24 throughout all my videos, 
that it became a habit that I said chapter 24. I meant chapter 27. <laughs> you know what I mean, folks. So look at chapter 26. 26. That's the last time I'm going to say it. <laughs> chapter 26. Okay. We're going to look at Matthew chapter 26. I kept saying Matthew 24, Matthew 24, Matthew 24, and so many teachings to debunk heresy that it became a habit, so I apologize. Okay, so we're going to look at Matthew 26, Philippians chapter 3, and then the book of Hebrews. Now, I'm going to collide these three verses together. That way you can get it, okay? So we're going to look at, turn to Hebrews 2, okay? Hebrews. Now, I'm going to show you something here. Chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. We're going to look at one by one by one on what the Bible says right here. We're going to look at, first of all, let's start off with Philippians chapter 3, verse 21. No, I want to use that last. Let's look at Matthew chapter 26. I'm trying to set up the whore the best, okay? That's why I'm trying to set up the whore the best. <clears throat> look at verse 39. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. So notice there was something right here. Verse 38. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. Now, this is an important point right here. The important point right here is what was Jesus afraid of the most? Jesus, what he feared the most was taking the cup of sin upon himself. He was going to bear the sin of all of mankind upon himself. And that's what Jesus feared the most, you got to understand. It wasn't the torture of the nails being pierced in his hands the whip that went down on his back and tore up his flesh, his beard getting plucked out. That was not what he feared the most. Because look at Hebrews 12, okay? Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Notice what Jesus says. The pain, the cross, the pain, was not what Jesus feared and cried. Hebrews 12, 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the what? Joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. See, he wasn't sorrowful unto death at Matthew 26. He was in joy, and he despised that shame. He put it aside. Who cared about that? But look at Hebrews chapter 5. Chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 7. Who in the days of his flesh, chapter 5, verse 7, who in the days of his flesh, when he had... <clears throat> offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he feared. So notice right here that Jesus Christ, concerning about his death on the cross, he was afraid. He was afraid of something in this cross. It was strong crying and tears. The holy God the great I am that I am, there was something that he feared the most. And it wasn't bloody torture, which we saw in Hebrews 12. Well, what part of the cross was it that he feared? Matthew 26 told you, the cup, right? Let this cup pass from me. That cup was the dregs of the wrath of God upon sin. That was that cup. He had to drink the bitter cup of sin upon himself, taking all of sin of mankind upon himself for you and I. Now, I want you to go to Philippians 3. You ready for this? Let's add all these things together now, okay? <clears throat> Let's add all these things together. Hebrews 5, Hebrews 11. <clears throat> ready for this? Verse 21. Who shall change our vile body? Amen? Aren't you all glad that God's going to change your sinful body? Yeah. That it may be fashioned like unto whose body? Jesus' body. Man, imagine becoming like Jesus Christ. What an honor. What a privilege that God has given to you and I. According to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. That is the most blessed thing that you and I are going to have a body that never knows sin. That never wants to sin again. That will hate sin and will always serve Jesus Christ. Okay, you're already adding. Okay, then. Oh, man. This is why I don't like 
Bible believers who know too much of the Bible. <laughs> Amen. No, it's a blessed thing. Amen. It's a good thing you know that book. So you can add one plus one equals, and plus one plus one plus one, and then add the thing together quickly. For those of you who don't know yet, here's the idea. Your body will be changed like Jesus Christ. What did he hate the most? Sin. It wasn't pain, blood, torture. It was sin. What will God judge you at the judgment seat of Christ? You're going to get his own righteous holy body, and that holy body, which is, has a transformation of senses and desires concerning sin, is going to taste that at the judgment seat of Christ. And that's what Jesus hated the most. Think about it. God who never sinned from beginning to end, what do you think he'll hate the most? That's why he'll have hell fire for that. Just for that, he'll have hell fire because he hates that the most. What is it? Sin. Trust me, the thing that you're going to hate the most at the judgment seat of Christ is not burning in hell. It's not torture and bleeding and pain. It's actually the sin that you've committed. So basically, all the torture and pain that you'll ever feel or that you'll ever sense, all at once at the judgment seat of Christ. And perhaps some of you would prefer the cross. Perhaps some of you would prefer the cross and the torture rather, rather than some of you would perhaps prefer the torture and the bleeding and the suffering more than having your sin judged. Think about that for a while. So, I gave a theory that the terror of the Lord might be, might be a whipping post. Because the Bible says that the book of Luke, he, the servant who didn't do right, he received stripes on his back. And Hebrews chapter 12 said that father will scourge his children when he chastens them. But trust me, some of you would love a whipping post in having this. Now you think that you think that the judgment seat of Christ is whoop did he do da dandy, and you can get away with it. With that horrible thought, let's close in prayer.